Hello, coaches. Looking forward to kicking this series off. Uh, plan is to make these videos regularly. I get a lot of questions in coach training in class and in one-on-ones, just chats as people are navigating the coaching field, the coach training field, and uh, through my work with BetterUp and, and partnering with other companies. There's a lot of questions out there around coaching and how to move forward, how to move forward successfully, naturally with the skills that we develop. And this question comes from a class uh, participant. How do the ICF competencies work in the real world when people expect you to give them suggestions? It's a common question because in, in coach training, we tend to take the first quarter or so, stripping away all the things that we do naturally and habitually that aren't necessarily a part of the default the coach should build. Some of those are like closed questions. Coaches should, in the beginning of training, get rid of pretty much all their closed questions, knowing that they might insert them back in. Uh, closed questions can be powerful, poignant, challenging, but to do a bunch of them in a row can be a bit like an interrogation. So getting control of that, getting control of silence and space, being able to have some space instead of interruption. Another thing that we strip away as part of getting started in coach training is the giving of suggestions. There's two main types of suggestions, by the way. One is like a suggestion of where we might explore next. And that's a little bit more encouraged uh, or allowed for in ICF coaching, uh, where you're saying, hey, I get the sense we might look at it from this angle now. What are your thoughts on that? So openly handing it back still. But uh, yeah, suggesting, suggesting where to, to go next with uh, the discussion. That's sharing perspective openly. That's, that's very normal. But the idea of here's a suggestion of what might work for you in helping resolve your challenge. Um, this is a suggestion of what might alleviate the pressure you're feeling in the session as you're not sure where to go next uh, with this big challenging thing that you're facing. Those kind of suggestions are alleviating the, the client's own creative pressure and stress that coaching is really designed to help them experience. But there's only so much that the client can take when it comes to pressure and stress in a coaching session. We don't want to overextend them. We don't want to pressure them too much. We don't want to not give them anything. When a client says, I don't know, do you have any tips or tricks on how to prepare for this type of meeting or presentation? I encourage coaches not to say, oh, I don't do tips and tricks. Instead, we might offer uh, a tip in the form of a resource, a tool, a whiteboarding exercise that we walk through to organize thoughts, but not to give them a solution. But if a client says, hey, do you have any tips on delegation? I might, uh, I might give them my developmental delegation resource or something like that, and we can come up with a customized solution. Though I could also say what, one thing that has worked for some of the people I've served over the years is to think about who in your team could benefit from taking this one meeting on in terms of gaining exposure, or maybe they'd enjoy the process more than you. Maybe they have a strength here. That's one way to look at it, though. What are your thoughts? That's me giving a suggestion. It's based on my perspective. And if you notice the way I said it, it's here's a take that has worked for some. What are your thoughts? This is my thought. What are your thoughts? So in terms of the ICF's perspective, that open handback is the most critical piece. We might share some things, but whatever we share, we need to do with an open hand. Core competency seven, part 11, we share observations, insights, and feelings without attachment. I don't have to be right. I'm not saying, hey, what's worked for others is to select people for delegation, someone on your team that uh, they're looking to get a promotion with that other team that's going to be involved in the meeting. I think you should do that, right? That kind of approach says, I'm attached. I'm attached. I know this works, and this is going to work for you in a way that's owning the client's story. And uh, it's my harsh way of saying it, but I think it's important for the coach to openly invite the client to make it their own. It's just a take, and the way they apply that concept would really depend on their experience. So we can share things, even sometimes um, suggestions, but the way we offer the suggestion should be more like a perspective rather than the correct answer. PCC marker for evaluation 4.4 around trust and safety looks at it this way. A coach should partner with the client by inviting the client to respond in any way to the coach's contributions and accepts that client's response. Now, if I get a sense that the client could benefit from me sharing the 
um, the process I have found useful. I just did this today. Um, I shared these glasses as a way I create a memory for myself. This is a reminder of my motivation. Uh, these glasses were a part of presentations I gave almost like 15 years ago around uh, expanding our ability to provide vision in young adult life and young adults' lives, helping those who are younger um, have more support early on so they can adjust their vision for themselves. These are eye adjusters, first form, I think, very early design. Now they've got a whole different lineup and stuff, but these are used, or these were used at least for locations where they couldn't find or easily access someone who's in an optometrist, but they could get some sort of close prescription for themselves. So they were able to adjust their vision. To me, every time I see this sitting here on my desk, it's always here, but it's this little reminder of my motivation. So today, client um, was needing to remember something and I was asking all sorts of normal open questions, but at one point, we were short on time, so I offered a perspective, something to consider after the session. I said, um, one thing you might consider is how you might remember this perspective when your motivation is down or when this other perspective or other requ requirement is showing up that's distracting you from what you want to do. And one thing that might be helpful is a turn of phrase or maybe even an object that when you see it, it reminds you of your values, it reminds you of your, mo your motivation or, or whatnot. I gave the quick story of this, like I just did here, and then I said, don't you think, right? No, I didn't do that. Instead, it was more, hey, that's something I found useful, but this is your story, what are your thoughts? I handed it back to this individual, and actually, the way the client took it was something a bit different, it seems like, and that's great, because it's not my, like, I don't need to be validated. When I offer something, it needs to be pretty rare, and it needs to be openly handed back. And that's one way these ICF competencies work in the real world. The ICF isn't saying, oh, if, you, if you're doing any kind of suggestions, you're not doing peer coach, or you're not doing real coaching. It's not necessarily true, but there are some things to consider. Um, for one, it is better to share usually directly than trying to play 20 questions 20 questions is when you know what you think is the right answer. And so you're asking these leading questions that are trying to get the client, like, have you thought of it this way or that way or this way? Have you tried this? Have you seen this? And you're trying to get the person to see what you see, but you're doing it in them with this, I don't know, kindergarten way. That's how I call it when I do it myself. Or one of the first things I had caught on with my own mentor coaching years ago. So don't do 20 questions, either dump the idea and instinct set it aside and just follow the client. Or say, hey, client, I've got this idea. It's worked for some, yeah, I found it useful. It's a popular resource, whatever. I've got this idea, here it is succinctly. What are your thoughts? Um, also keep in mind, the more we share, the more the client, when they're uncomfortable, they'll say, I don't know, that's a tough question. How about you give me something? Now, sometimes we give something. But if I'm, any time the client's uncomfortable, any time the client's struggling, any time the client's unsure about where to go with their life, and I'm there to rescue them, what's that say about a relationship? Eef. I don't want to be that kind of coach that they need to rely on when I'm gone. I want them to know that they can rely on themselves, and so that requires uh, some discomfort. So this last point is something my students probably get tired of me saying, but a coach is not about, or coaching is not about making the client feel comfortable but to support them safely through their uncomfortable journey of stretching, of growing, of pursuing their self-awareness -aware towards their self-fulfillment. Yeah, life's uncomfortable, but if we are able to walk with them through that, that discomfort they have, they have to go through with safety, with trust, with support, and maybe with some, some light idea sharing, the more they will be able to get there. But we don't wanna give them so much that they aren't getting themselves there. Uh, I don't want my client's story just to look like my story. It's theirs. It's their life. So the process, how do these work? How do you give something? First, it's good to go to the basics and make that the default. If your default is client's uncomfortable, better share. 
clients asking for tips better give them everything then we got to dial that back and it all starts with how you start the agenda it kind of all starts with how you set up the contract marketing first call all that stuff but assuming you have things in place the definition of coaching all of that then it starts with establishing today's agenda and that includes the significance of the agenda because sometimes the client says i'm lacking time management skills and you're thinking well this is an executive vice president of a huge organ organization this company what's going on here we dig under the surface and find that it's not this time management thing it's more um, frustration with the mandate that they've received and how their team is receiving or something like that so we dig under the surface of the agenda, the significance, marker 3.3 in the ICF comp, uh, PCC markers. We look at maybe obstacles that they're facing, and we also explore what they need by the end of this session to help them. At that point, they might say, I need tips and tricks. Oftentimes, they might just say, I need to talk it through. Or they might say, you know, I, I think I need to make a decision. Or I need to have some steps, some things to experiment with, things like that. But you want to defer to them first. Get an idea of what they need before we fill in any gaps. We get in the open conversation. We ask things openly. We don't narrow the scope just by asking closed questions unless we really mean to, and almost always it's best to ask one or two, three closed questions at a time in, a, in any coaching session. Um, and if they're getting in an I don't know state and they're wanting to defer to you, try narrowing the scope of the question instead of what are your goals this year? Or like, what are your goals? What are your goals this year? What are your goals this month? What are your goals this week? What are your goals in this aspect of your life? You can narrow the scope of a question down to make it more manageable for a person. Uh, another way this happens and gets in the way of a client making progress and the reason they might ask you for advice is because when, when you set the agenda, the first question might be um, like resolution. Uh, resolution? Instead of moving to resolution, we should move towards exploration. But the resolution sounds like, um, okay, today I need some ideas about how to start this meeting with my managers to, to really advocate for my, you know, my needs this, this quarter because of everything going on with my family. Okay, great. What are your ideas for starting the conversation? How will you start the conversation? What's one step you can take to know how to start the conversation? Like that's resolution. We're closing the book with that kind of question. Compare that to uh, what would it take? What would it take to know how to start that conversation? Um, how are you feeling about the beginning of the conversation? What do you want the, the experience to be like as you walk in the door and sit down and, and begin the conversation? Or even just making it a draft. Uh, what is what are your current ideas about how you start the conversation? What are your current ideas for the best decision here? If you had to have a rough draft of the plan that you want to make here today, what's that first take? So maybe putting all the pieces on the table, but we're not saying what is the choice? What is the step? What is the decision? What is the idea? Uh, ask openly for exploration. And uh, that's a way to narrow the scope towards um, expl you know, exploring what might be going on instead of the heavy, heavy question of what will you do about it? Um, that probably deserves a whole new video um, as a Q name. I know I get that question a lot. Uh, and then finally, there's a lot of talking just to get to this point of saying, and hey, then maybe you offer a suggestion. Don't step first with the suggestion. Make it your default to ask an extra question, a narrower question, an easier question maybe that helps the clients take more ownership, even if it's a, a question that helps them give you a bit more that could guide the potential perspective or suggestion you might make. But when you offer, make sure to openly hand it back so that you're not saying this is the right path. You give it to them. Now, little caveat here. We can, we can put this in, I guess I should put it here. Um, like Googleable info is different if the client's like i don't know what's a person supposed to do to to build a resume like what format should i use i mean if i'm in career coaching i'm not going to play around and I, I might just say hey here's the format what this is normal if a person says i'm not sure 
uh, what are the social media networks? Do you have any ideas about the main ones that might be used? Uh, I mean, I mean if I'm working in that space, I might give them that information. That's not really a suggestion, that's just level setting expectations with easily accessible, Googleable information that the client kind of has access to, but it's not something to really coach around. That's a little bit of a tentative caveat. Most of the time when the client's asking for tips, it's because they're uncomfortable. They're really wanting someone to support them in their journey. They're not asking for you to take over. They just want some help. So when you are stuck, not sure how to address this request for suggestion, request for tips, or you have this idea in the back of your mind, make sure you are offering some exploration, but realize that the ICF and, and just good coaching practices, it's not just like the ICF's the only expert here, only perspective, but it's a good perspective in my opinion. You can give stuff, it's not that you can't. Make sure it's openly handed back and know that there's a cost of every time you give, the more the person might depend on you in the future to give when they're uncomfortable. Keep all that in mind. Hope this presentation has been a bit helpful in answering the question. Thank you for coaching everybody. See you next time.